couple of years back, I worked as a Pulse Mace delivery driver on the weekends. I lived in the city at the time, so I could ride my bike to make the deliveries. I liked it because I could get more exercise. One night, on a nice Friday night in the summer, I was working for a few hours. I remember it was sunny and warm. At about 8 p.m., I got a delivery for an order of a sub-restaurant. I rode my bike and picked it up, and then I rode to the address. When I arrived at the address, it was an apartment building on the edge of the city, next to a park. I got off my bike and walked up to the front door. After a couple of minutes went by and nobody came, I texted the man and said I was there. A few seconds later, I got a response. He asked if I could bring it up to this room on the second floor, and he said he would buzz me in. I didn't mind at all, and I said that I would. The man let me in, and I walked up the stairs to the second floor into the room he told me. I knocked on the door. The man opened it and smiled. He seemed very friendly. He said thank you to me and mentioned that he would give me a nice tip. Then I heard a woman's voice say thank you as well, coming from inside the room. I said no problem and I left. Then I walked back down and outside of the apartment to my bike and continued with my deliveries for the evening. About two hours later, I got another delivery near the same area and my road took me past that same park. But as I rode past the apartment building, I noticed an ambulance and several police cars outside of it. I was going to ignore it and ride past when I caught a glimpse of the man that I had delivered to. He was being led into a cop car. I had to stop my bike quick and ask what happened. I didn't get much information, but I did hear that a man had nearly killed a woman. Later when I went home, I found out that the very same man I had delivered to was with a woman that night that he met for the first time, and he tried to force himself on the woman and she resisted. That started the struggle between them and the woman ended up breaking her arm and being knocked unconscious. The man was arrested and the woman was taken to the hospital. It's crazy to me that I delivered to them and they both seemed so happy just a few hours before. So I just moved to California about four months ago and everything's been pretty much a dry run for the worst. My car guy rear-ended. My living situation absolutely sucks and I'm now more broke than I've ever been in my life. I've also had some pretty creepy experiences out here that have definitely forced me to be more on my guard. I come from a small town where you can walk the streets at 2 in the morning and arrive home in one piece, but I now live in a really large part of Lev where you have to keep your eyes peeled 24-7. It also doesn't really help that I watch a lot of crime shows and have now become terrified to leave my apartment after these following events. The first happened to my rental car that I was given due to my car accident. I was a full-time DoorDash driver trying to make ends meet in an attempt to squirrel away some cash as I knew I'd be relying on lit rides and would need basic things such as groceries when my time with the rental eventually ran out. My DoorDash shifts typically ran from early in the morning to late in the evening as late gas prices and the fancy grocery rates aren't going to pay for themselves. All of that along with my rent to my crazy roommate. Anyway, fast forward, and I dragged myself in my silver center to a grocery store that wasn't too far away from my complex. The incident was short, simple, and very common. I was pulling into a space at the same time as another car. It was a larger tan SUV. At first, I didn't really get a good look at the people inside the vehicle, and without thinking of any circumstance, I pulled in. Now in hindsight, I probably should have submitted and just given the spot to them. However, it was a really long shift, I was tired and the spot was really close to the grocery stores. It was dark outside after all and I figured the shorter walk would be safer. Now to this day, I can't tell you what possessed me to stay put. Normally, I would have gotten out and just put my headphones in without thinking, but this time something stopped me. I looked back and I noticed the car had parked diagonally behind me. I could easily look back from the driver's side window and see them, and they pulled in so their faces were towards me. There were two very oversized men in baseball caps just looking at me. There was something in the stair that kept me locked solid in the vehicle. I locked all of my doors and kept looking back every so often. They kept their eyes glued on my every move. I felt a terrible feeling wash over me as I then put the car in reverse and exited the light. Not much of a story I know, but I really do wonder what the two large men would want with a 5 foot 3 petite woman like myself. The worst part of the story is that I really believe I saw the same men in a different parking lot just a few days later. They were parked already and took no note of me as I luckily sped off into the night. Fast forward two weeks and I'm back at Enterprise. Well, it's the day I have to give the car back and I'm dreading it. I should also mention that I really don't know anyone in the state of California, and I'm 2,000 miles away from my hometown. 
I knew that I'd be stranded at home from then on out until I found a car. Sitting at home without any weed can really be a major crisis in a time like this. The one lucky part of this story is there happens to be a dispensary about 3 minutes away from my complex. Well, I decided to take one for the team and walk there. I just had to toe covering my skin. I also made sure to leave early so that there would be more people around. I even had a friend from home on the phone with me the entire time. Unfortunately for me though, this plan fell flat on its face. I walked one minute down the road to a gas station and when I paused at the crosswalk, a dirty looking man in a white truck made eye contact with me. His windows were rolled down and he was paused at the stoplight. This is another time where I can be thankful for my intuition as I just felt something wasn't right about that look in his eye. I stayed out until he drove out of sight and then made my way passing the crosswalk. I realized that the man had doubled back and followed me by truck. He made a U-turn and everything. His eyes were still attached to me as I ran back towards the busy gas station and through the busy crosswalk. To my amazement, he turned around yet again just as I had. He passed me but not before making that same eye contact with me again as he drove off. This time I stayed put and called for an Uber. Sometimes it's just more worth it to shell out the extra six bucks. Overall, the time here has been pretty rough and I really wouldn't recommend moving to the state unless you have people you know here and a good place to live. Please stay safe out there. This happened during autumn of 2013. I was working as a delivery boy for a pizza place. I lived in southern Ontario, in a fairly modestly sized city. I was doing what was possibly the longest drive that I'd ever taken for a delivery. It was in the middle of a forested area, about 25 minutes away from the place I worked at. The place that I worked for is on the outskirts of the city, so it wasn't really unusual for us to get rural deliveries. When I finally pulled up to the address in question, it was an old, disheveled, dilapidated house, totally surrounded by forest. I called up my boss and I asked him twice just to make sure this is the correct address. I could tell he was in a crappy mood, so I didn't want to bother him any further. I just took a deep breath and then walked to the front door of the house. There was no doorbell, so I decided to knock loudly, just to make sure that the residents heard me. No response. I waited for about a minute before knocking again, saying that I was the pizza guy. Still no response. As I began to turn around to get back to my car, I saw a pair of eyes from an open window staring intently and directly at me. After about 5 seconds of that person staring at me so eerily, I just dropped the pizza and ran back to my car. The damn thing wouldn't turn on until I turned my keys for the third time. I didn't get too far away from the house when the car then began jolting. Then an awful screeching sound started, forcing me to stop the car. When I got out and looked at my tires, my blood froze, just what I had feared. All four of the tires were slashed. I thought to myself, who in the world did this? I mean, I saw that person in the window while I was at the front door. I then went back to my car and called the emergency services. I explained my situation to them to the best of my ability. The operator then told me that the police would be there in about half an hour. I then asked her if it would be best to stay in the car or run away. She said that it would probably be best to stay in my car. I waited anxiously for the police to arrive while I was still on the line with the operator. What happened next utterly broke me, and I truly hope that nobody else ever has to experience this level of fear. While I was examining my surroundings, I looked in the overhead mirror and I saw that same person before that was in the open window right in the middle of the road behind my car. I could tell now that it was a man, eyes open even wider than before, then I could ever so slightly see a demented smile then spread across his face. I just stormed open the door and fled into the woods, not giving a second crap about weed in my life. I ran until I was nearly out of breath, then hid behind the log and some shrubs. I waited for what felt like an hour until I finally heard a siren wailing in the distance. I gathered all the stamina I had left and ran back to my car. By the time I got back, police were inspecting my car. I ran to them shouting for help like a lunatic. I fell to the ground and then coughed from running so much. Two officers then picked me up and questioned me. I told them the situation and they sent most of the officers in the house, but one stayed with Lee for company. Eventually, the officers came out with a knife, obviously the one used to slash my tires. One officer said that it was probably some sick insane couple who did this, given that I saw the man. Unfortunately, they were never found and that still really pains me to this day. I obviously quit my job right after that, and I began working in a department store in the city. But I'll never forget the look on that man's face when he stared at my car in the pitch black darkness.
When I was a senior in high school, I worked as a pizza delivery boy. It was a pretty good paying job with tips, and I enjoyed it a lot. One night on a Friday, I was working and got a delivery for one pizza to a house on the other end of town. I made the drive to the house, which took about 10 minutes, and then I arrived. I stepped out of the car and started to walk up to the house. It was a small and average looking house, kind of old, nothing eye-catching. I walked to the front door, but when I got there, I noticed a post-it note stuck to the door that said to use the back. I walked around to the back door of the house, which was located in the center of the house in front of a small fence backyard with a little patio on it. I was about to knock on the door when I saw another post-it note. It said, please bring pizza inside. Now this may be a little bit uncomfortable, but I decided to go in anyways. I could hear music playing from inside the house. When I opened the door, I saw what appeared to be a kitchen. It was pretty empty though. There was no food or plates out, but on the kitchen table near the door, there was a Bluetooth speaker that was playing music. I started to place the pizza box on the table and I saw yet another sticky note posted there. It said, bring pizza downstairs and I will give you your tip. I looked to the end of the kitchen and saw an open doorway with a staircase leading to a very dark basement. This is where I had to draw the line in my head. I decided I would have to skip the tip on this one and I was not going to go down the stairs. I left the pizza on the table and started to walk away to leave. But then the music on the speaker stopped playing and a deep man's voice started speaking on it and said stop. Then it said, why don't you come downstairs? I wasn't going to stay there any longer and I quickly opened the door and left. When I did, I could hear the deep man's voice laughing. I ran back to my car and drove all the way back to the restaurant. A few weeks later when I was working, I got a delivery and when I started driving, I noticed it was the address of that creepy house again. I really did not want to go back there, but it was my job and I didn't want to tell my boss I was scared, so I continued driving. Once I arrived, I took a good look at the house. I could see a note was on the door again. I sat in my car for a good minute hyping myself up to go back to the house. I finally got out and started walking straight to the back. But when I noticed the front door, the sticky note said something different on it this time. I walked up to the front door and looked closer. The note said come in the front door this time and that it had a smiling winking face on it. I just dropped the pizza on the front step and knocked on the door two times and then left. I hurried back to my car, got in, and drove back to the restaurant again. Thankfully, I never had to deliver to the house again. This happened back in 2019 on a Friday night in January. I had just gotten back from work and was honestly way too tired to make my own food. I always heard good things about food delivery apps and so I figured that night was the perfect night to finally download one and try it out. I just downloaded the first one that showed up. I then made an account, placed an order at a similar nearby restaurant, and turned on Netflix to watch while I waited for it to arrive. Now, it's worth mentioning that on this night in particular, there was a lot of snow on the ground. The app said the delivery would take around 20 minutes, but I figured that didn't account for the terrible driving conditions. I honestly assumed it would probably take double that. I can't remember exactly how much time had passed, but it finally got to a point where I figured I'd just forget it and cancel the order. But right before I did, I got a message from the driver. Word for word, the message read, now you gotta remember, I had just downloaded the app that night so I didn't know if it was common or not for drivers to ask for their customers personal phone numbers. But I ended up giving it to him anyway. Around 10 minutes later, he would contact me, but not over a phone call like I expected. The guy texted me saying he'd be at my place with the food in 10 minutes. This unsettled me a bit. I was under the impression he needed my phone number so he could call me and give better directions, but I just tried to brush it off. Around 10 minutes later, I would get another text saying he'd left the food on my doorstep. I went outside to get it and sent the text back thanking him. I figured that was that, but around midnight I would get another text. It was the delivery driver. The text simply read, this was now getting extremely weird, as the text suggested that the guy had stayed to watch me grab the food from my doorstep. I tried to play it cool, and responded with something like, I can't remember everything that was said next, but it was some string of multiple texts that were something along the lines of, but so how's your night going, what are you up to, and various other seemingly harmless messages. To these, I did respond. At the end of the day, I told myself I didn't know this guy, and I had no obligation to keep a conversation going, so I just went to bed. But come morning, I would wake up to 20-something texts and multiple missed calls all from the same number. It was again that same delivery driver. 
The last text was sent at 3 a.m. and as I scrolled through the text, two in particular caught my eye. One of them read, but that wasn't even the worst of it. I would later go outside to find footprints in the snow that I knew for a fact were not there the other day, meaning this guy wasn't joking. He had actually showed up to my house, and by the looks of the footprints, had walked around it multiple times. I have since moved, and haven't received another text from the number. That was the first and only time I will ever use a food delivery app.